So the next thing we're going to talk about uh, is I'm going to go over some of the terminology I just used uh, that you may or may not actually understand. Um, the first uh, major topic we need to cover is LDAP, the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. The idea behind LDAP is it was produced as a standard way to retrieve directory information from a database somewhere so that you could get uh, your username, your user ID, your group ID, the, the groups you were a member of, and additional data like your email address, your, your home address, uh, things like that. So it, it was basically an address book protocol. Um, it's also used, as I said, very, very commonly as a central data store for logging users. You know, you want to know, you know, uh, you, you want to have a, a good, simple mapping to this user, ID, user name from this person and associate it with any information about that user that the central server needs to know or might need to, need to know for human resources purposes, for login purposes, any of a number of reasons. So uh, there were several other directory protocols in the past. Um, one of the more popular was NIST, the Network Information Services, that was produced by Sun. It's gone out of vogue uh, in large part due to uh, regulatory changes such as Sorbanes-Oxley, where it's considered insufficiently secure for storage of uh, user, user information that could potentially be used for nefarious purposes, including uh, complicated hacking attempts or for identity theft and so on, um, or even just plain old-fashioned uh, blackmail. So now there are a great many more uh, rules and regulations in place for how you can store user data, what you can store of that, about that user. And so really, uh, in a, you know, if, you're, if you are in a public company, at this point you cannot be using this. Um, LDAP uh, now has, you know, over many years has evolved uh, the ability to talk uh, securely using, um, using SSL or TLS communication. Uh, you can you can do authentications now with uh, by performing an LDAP bind rather than looking up a, a user's hash and comparing that locally, which was the uh, traditional NIST approach. So that provides an extra layer of security. You know you don't have to you don't give away the hash, which allows a, which allows a user to perform an offline dictionary attack, for example, or just a brute force attack because they because now if they want to log in they have to log in on the server and you can implement controls such as Minimum, uh, you know, maximum attempts. Um, you know, for, you know, force a timeout after they fail, uh, fail an attempt. Uh, all sorts of things that can uh, that can eliminate, uh, uh, you know, the, these offline attacks and reduce the ability ability of an attacker to gain access to the system. The next uh, technology that we're going to talk about is Kerberos. Um, this was uh, designed to be a single sign-on solution for uh, accessing multiple services from a single set of credentials. Um, the idea at a high level is that what you, what you do is you acquire a ticket granting ticket from the KDC. This is done by using a shared secret, essentially a password, uh, although it doesn't have to be, and I'll get to that later. Uh, which you present, a, you, you sign a request to the KDC with your user password. KDC receives that uh, receives that packet, uh, says, okay, since this was a valid request and it was encrypted with the password that I know that the user has, I'll issue back a ticket granting ticket. This is a piece of encrypted information that can, uh, that's also encrypted by my password that contains an, an additional piece of encrypted information that is encrypted by a private key kept known only to the KDC. So I want to now I have this ticket granting ticket, and I want to gain access to this web server over here. I want to log into this web application. So I, sign to, I connect to the web application, which is Kerberized, meaning it is capable of accepting Kerberos tickets. And I say, here's my Kerberos credential. It tells me, here's my, this is my service principal. This is the name I, know, I am known to the KDC. You then ask the KDC, I need, with, with that ticket granting ticket, here's my, here's my proof that I have authenticated to you, and here's the principal that I need. You send I, the KDC then sends back to me a ticket again encrypted with my with my password that contains in it data that is encrypted by the service the service uh, the services 
private key. So I, I present that to the service. The service says, okay, KDC has told me through you that you are who you say you are. So we will establish a, a, a rapport. We will, we will open our connection. We will Im implement uh, encryption between that, you know, using Kerberos between that connection if we are so asked. And we continue on. The interesting thing about uh, the Kerberos protocol is that because of the way that we encrypt every packet that is sent, it doesn't need, the, the communication to and from the KDC itself does not need to be encrypted. Uh, so it's designed to be, oper it's designed to work across an unsecured network and to, and to do so securely. So these are the two primary technologies uh, that we're going to be working with in the SSSD. Um, so uh, basically, uh, 